Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. A man like us. No rain for three and a half years. This is a day for us to learn how to lean on the Lord that is filled with lies. Lies of what constitutes happiness. Lies of what constitute promise. Lies of what our hope can be placed in. Lies of who we can really trust. Lord, learning to lean is all about a search. The search for the one that can hold us when we cry. That can enable us when we're weak. That can hold us up when we feel like defeat is imminent and where and who can be there when nobody else is around. So as we worship today, Lord, help us to learn how to lean and slide us from just people who speak about you to people that all the world will look at and say, there's a servant of God if ever there was one. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, we come to you today recognizing that you walk through us through all the challenges of life, including those who are going to have children, babies, and every birth is different. And every birth is a challenge. But you also remind us when we're going through aches and pains like Betty and Mary Ann. And yes, even the loved ones of this one that came to a moment of crisis and ended his life. He couldn't see the hope. He couldn't see the beyond. And there's others, Lord, today that are struggling with cancer and pains and struggles. The fires that are driving people from their homes, devastating communities, even a danger to the first responders that are trying to look for survivors. Lord, we live in a world where schools need you, parents need you, Students need you. Government officials need you. Judges need you. Police need you. Firefighters need you. All of us who go to work need you. Help us, Lord. Help us to know you better and to learn how to lean on you. And to stay where we're supposed to be staying until you say otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
may be seated. Well, we're in this new series. We started the first segment uh, um, two weeks ago on the, seer, on the life of Elijah. The series is called No Hesitation. And uh, we're going to be reading today, starting in chapter 17, going through verses 1 through 7, if you'd like to follow along. Message title is called Basic Training. You see there is uh, Elijah in the corner, and he is uh, by the riverbank of the, of the brook Sharif. And he's being fed by the ravens. Let's read together. Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, surely there shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. The word of the Lord came to him, saying, Go away from here, turn eastward, and hide yourself by the brook Sharif, which is east of the Jordan. It shall be that I will get, will drink, you will drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to provide for you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and lived by the brook Sharif, which is east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he would drink from the brook. It happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. May the Lord add his blessing to this reading from God's word. Basic training. You see, I struggle with new things, even things that I initiate. When I moved away and went to college, when I decided to become a preacher, when I got married, we had kids. Every new church I ever had New experiences are always a challenge. I was supposed to start getting my Social Security checks before Thursday of July. Didn't come. Gave them a call. That's funny, we sent it. Then I found out, no, they hadn't sent it. Somebody had the caseworker that actually called me in April hadn't done something. So it didn't release. Wait three to five days and see what happens. Three to five days, I called him again. Well, we sent it. That's what she said last time. <laughs> so I went to the office, Social Security. Was met with this guard with beady eyes and a mohawk haircut that said, Absolutely no loaded weapons, no knives, and no mace, and stared at me with beady eyes and kept looking at all of us like we were guilty of sin. They said, Well, we sent it to the account you told us to that was provided at your phone interview, we send it to this bank, you're going to have to go to the bank, find out what they did with it. So I went to the bank. The bank informed me, well, first of all, the account number you gave us is not even a number. And if we had received that, we would have sent it back to them. But secondly, they didn't send it. 
So they gave me a direct deposit slip and sent me back to the Social Security office. With the security guard, they had the beady eyes of the Mohawk that said, no guns, no mace, no knives, and looked at me again. That's when I took the deposit slip with the actual account number, the routing number, and they said, well, we'll see what happens. Give it another three to five days. <laughs> Three to five days, they finally sent a test. It went through, and I finally got my money. Oh, starting new things. Social Security, Medicare, it's all fun, right? That's where the counsel of God is so important this morning. Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Now what I know this morning is all of us go through starts of new things in our lives. And there are always basics. Remember Beetle Bailey out of the fanny strips? We all have to learn basics, don't we? If you're going to communicate, like reading, writing, speaking, it starts with learning your ABCs. And then spelling words, making sentences, paragraphs, pages, chapters, books. For musicians, it starts with a scale. Remember Julie Andrews and the sound of music? Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. You'll never be a singer if you don't know that. My brother was never going to learn how to play the trombone starting in seventh grade in my room. And he always procrastinated before, right before bedtime to practice when I was trying to sleep. I heard trombone, 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. You'll never learn how to play the piano if you don't know the scales. You'll never learn how to be a choir if you don't know the scales. Orientation to college. My orientation always included the card catalog of what system it used where to find reference materials, where to find periodicals, where to find books of differing subjects and interests. And then there is sports. You never played a sport without a drill. Basketball players have to learn how to dribble the ball, how to pass the ball, how to catch the ball, how to shoot baskets, how to block out, how to rebound. Football players have got to learn all those things that offenses do and defenses do. They've got to learn how to move laterally and how to come off of the line and not have a, a penalty call because you come off early. There's all these drills getting ready for the season. And then the military, basic training. Sergeant Beetle Bailey trying to take people of all shapes and sizes and beliefs and backgrounds and break them down. I tell you, become a fighting... God had a two-step process to develop his spokesperson, Elijah. Here's the map. We looked at it a couple of weeks ago. Notice that uh, Elijah goes from Tishbe, which is over on the eastern side of the Jordan River. From Tishbe, he goes straight to Samaria, which is the capital of the northern kingdom, which is where Ahab is the king 
of the northern ten tribes of Israel. Judah's in the south, that's Judah, Benjamin, the Levites. Everybody in the north is all the other tribes, and Ahab is their king. So, basically, he goes from Tishba, which is where he's from, to Samaria, and then he's going to go back to Sharif, the brook. So, same general area. But here's the step. God begins with a visible voice of pronouncement. That's what happens in your, ver in your first verse. 17th chapter, verse 1, it says, Now Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the settlers of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom he whom I stand, surely there will be neither dew nor rain these years except as my word. This is in your face. This is to the weak king who married Jezebel, who was a princess of Baal from Sidon, who brought all her prophets and who literally littered Samaria and the northern kingdom with all kinds of idolatry that executed the prophets of God, that instituted the illegal priests of Baal, and she's pretty much running the kingdom. So this is a challenge to Ahab in his weakness, his wickedness. It says he did more evil than all the other kings who were before him. But it's also to Jezebel and Baal himself. You see, Baal is the god of storms. So their winter is a monsoon season of storms. You didn't have storms, you didn't have a crop, you didn't have anything. Now understand, the land of Israel is different. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, reminds us in verses 10 and 11, it says, this is not like the land you came from in Egypt, which had the Nile. So you irrigated your crops out of the Nile. This is a land that has to catch the water. Understand, it's mountainous ravines. Buckets. Of ways, but above all, you've got to have the Lord that watches over the land. If you don't have God's blessing, you don't have anything. And here they are, all the northern kings, and they're living the lie of idolatry. Baal says, do this, and you're going to get crops. Give me all your children, your firstborn, and you can have crops. Commit idolatry and adultery with somebody else that's a cult prostitute, reenact that, and you can have water. You can have crops. You see, idolatry is all about a lie of where truth is coming from. You don't get truth from a stump. You don't get truth from a rock. You don't get anything from something that is an object, a symbol that cannot hear, cannot see, cannot do anything to help you. It was a lie. So that's the first step. A visible voice of pronouncement. Now there is this invisible voice of protection. Look at what it says. Go away, verse 3, from here. Turn eastward and hide yourself by the brook Sharif. The brook Sharif comes from a Hebrew word which means to break down. To break down. God is taking Elijah to Sharif to break him down and also to protect him because now... He is, he basically, he's got a target on his back. Jezebel has put a bounty on his head. 
And he's going to hide in this brook, Sharif. Now he might as well live it up. God has told you to go there and hide. He's promised you water from the brook. And the ravens are going to bring you meat and bread twice a day. Might as well live it up. Might as well have prayer meetings and, and, and eat and drink and live by the brook and be protected, right? And in that, he learns something. One day at a time. Trust God one day at a time. One One step at a time. But then, it said the brook dried up. Look what it says, verse 7. It happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. Isn't it amazing? The prayer that Elijah had prayed, the pronouncement he had made, and the brook kept flow, or stopped flowing. Can you imagine? This is what he's lived beside. See, God was teaching him how to lean. How to lean. The water stopped flowing. Lean on the Lord. God didn't leave yet. Lean. You ever been there? God tells you to do something. You do what you're doing, what you think He He wants you to do. And your prayers are just they're just dry. Your devotional life, it's just it's dry. Your marriage, you try to do the right thing. It's just it's it's dry. Trying to be a good parent to kids. But it's just dry. Your job, you had such excitement in the beginning. You know this is where you're supposed to be, but it's just, it's dry. Ever been there? Here's the thing. You and I have got to learn how to seek the Lord Always. Always. Not just part of the time. Not just when it's convenient. Not just when we want to. Not in just certain chosen areas of our life. Seek the Lord's will always. So there are some questions today. Where are you most comfortable where God is concerned? Are you a people person that likes being around people, that's got the gift of gab, that likes to have people around, you're a social butterfly? What are you going to do if God says, I want you to get out of commission for about three months and do nothing but pray? Bent, maybe. You're a quiet person. You love the quiet times. God tells you it's time to get up and say something. Be something. Be a part of something. Be out in the crowd that is an action plan. Not always easy against your grain. When does God prove himself? To you. When does he prove himself? See if he's led you. Where you are. And he's promised you. Twice a day to feed you. Then that's what you can expect. Promised. Two day meals. Bread. You can expect that's when it's going to happen. And yes, what is so hard 
about a walk with God. See, the walk with God, he never gives you the destination. Usually. He gives you step by step. Like Abraham. Like Abraham, Ur of Chaldeans, 75 years of age, go to the land that I will show you along the way. Psalms 119 says, God's word is a lamp unto my feet. That's the next step. And a light is in my path, about four feet. Enough to see the ledge, to see the tree that I might run into, to see the gully I might fall into, to see the curve that comes. But no more. But where he has you, there can still be a dry breath. A. W. Tozer once said, It is doubtful. Or bless a man without first hurting him greatly. In other words, breaking him. Isaiah 49, verses 14 and 15 says, Can a woman forget her newborn child? Even if it's possible for a woman to forget her unborn child, I will not forget you. I have pressed your image in the palm of my hand. God will not forget you, even in the dry places. He will not forget any of us when we're in the dry place and we're doing what he wants us to do. Here's the thing. God is up to something in Elijah's life. He's up to something in our life as we follow him, as we learn how to lean. We need to slide from speaker to servant. You see the before shot is in verse 17, verse 1. As the Lord, the God of Israel lives, before whom I stand. He is a speaker for God. That's the before shot. And he leads him from the palace to the protection of the brook. It's not until verse 24 at the end of the chapter. Verse 24 says, Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in your mouth is truth. God is moving Elijah from being a spokesperson, saying, I'm speaking for God, to being a servant of God, confirmed in the life of of those who have heard him speak and the truth that has been wrought. God is up to something. This is his basic training. We all know that for to grow a root system. I dug up a volunteer maple tree a couple weeks ago. It was in our Adele's flowers. She wanted it out. We needed more maple trees, so I dug it replanted it. It looks horrible. It looks horrible. I probably ought to water it today. Without a root, the foliage on the top is going to die, Right? Without the root system in our lives, we are not going to bear fruit. And that's what he is up to with Elijah. 
it may be what he's up to with you. Learn how to lean. Learn how to follow the promises. Learn how to trust even when the brook dries up. And don't dare move until he tells you to move. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your provisions, for your promise of daily bread. But when our brook has dried up and we think we're exactly where you've led us, first of all, confirm that that's what we are supposed to be doing. And then teach us how to lean on you to develop that root system that one day will bear fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. going to be singing a song of decision. What does it mean to seek God's leading in everything of life? Even though he may very well break us down. Even though it may not make sense. What does it mean? That's what we need to think about as we sing together our song of decision and close our service today. Let's stand and sing. Learning how to lean. morning.
Jesus has pressed you into the palm of his nail-scarred hand. Wherever you're at, wherever you're going, whatever you're planning tomorrow, given that chance, he will not forget you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly where he wants you to go next. Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Amen.